In our last class, we talked about the two pillars of well-being, self-responsibility and love. We looked at ways to keep balance in our life between unconditional self-acceptance, the yin, and self-improvement, the yang. As we all know, there are times in our life when despite knowing what we should do, we just cannot muster the energy or the motivation to do it. My body seems to shut down and resist. How do I help myself out of the hole of resistance that my body can seem to go into and sabotage my motivation? I'll share with you the most useful of time-honored tools passed down through the generations combined with newly evolved discoveries that I've learned for jump-starting a stalled human system. Every major spiritual tradition as well as successful athletic training, mental coaching, and emotional therapy have one thing in common. The process of maintaining self-improvement requires breath awareness and breath training. It's more than a metaphor for our connection to our inner source of wisdom. It brings us back to an experience of that inner source of wisdom. In many languages, the very word breath and spirit are the same. This life and wellness course would not be effective without teaching the basics of breath awareness and breath training. We actually began this in the opening centering exercise we did today. We have already practiced the essence of breath awareness and breath training. Now, libraries have been written on this subject. The Chinese have over 3,000 breathing exercises for health, well-being, as well as spiritual enlightenment. For our purposes, we will teach two basic exercises which you will be able to adapt to your life and empower your goals of personal effectiveness. These two exercises cover the functioning of the two branches of your autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. This will help you deal with the high arousal situations or emergency situations in your life and the calming maintenance situations, the non-emergency situations that you encounter as you engage in your everyday work and home life. So let's begin with the maintenance situations, which hopefully comprise the major portion of your life. And if they do not, let's affirm that by the end of our course, you won't be living from crisis to crisis. Because keeping your physical system in high arousal or stress for prolonged periods is debilitating and painful, as attested to by all branches of medicine, Western and Eastern. Let's begin with exercise number one. This is a simple breathing assessment. Put one hand on your chest and the other hand on your belly. Now just breathe normally and notice any movement of your hands. If your belly hand goes out on your inhale and in on your exhale, with a little movement of your chest hand, you have normal breathing pattern. If your belly hand goes in on the inhale and out on the exhale, you have a reversed breathing pattern. If your chest hand is moving the same or more than your belly hand, you're doing chest breathing. Now, if you have reverse or chest breathing, the next exercise may be more challenging for you, but extremely important for your general health and sense of well-being. Let's look at handout one for this class. On it, there is exercise two, belly diaphragmatic breathing. I'm going to ask you to sit comfortably and uncross your legs and arms. Now, once again, put one hand on your belly just below your lower ribs and focus on your hand 
raising as you inhale. Let go of all other concerns for the moment and just attend to this while you slowly exhale and notice your hand lowering. Now just stay with this a moment. Even if you cannot feel this, begin by imagining it until it starts to happen for you. Count the seconds you take for each inhale and the seconds for each exhale. Try adjusting the time it takes to make them even with minimal effort. So the counts on the inhale equal the counts on the exhale. Once you have comfortably done this, try extending the inhale and the exhale a few seconds. Try a bit longer count on the inhale and exhale. Now do this, the breathing as effortlessly as possible. Do not force it, especially on the exhale. Let the air fall out rather than just force it out. Once you've gotten this sensation of easy, steady breathing, you can at home try this belly breathing while you're lying on your side or on your back, sitting, standing, and eventually just moving about in your life. If in your life you check your breathing occasionally at work by putting your hand on your belly and letting your breath become more increasingly natural and effortless, you will experience a change in the quality of how it is to be at work. Just notice in this little brief time that we did this, what you experience. This type of breathing should be practiced and maintained as much as possible in every phase of your life. It will build resources on a cellular level and help to regulate all your physiological systems. The effects of poor breathing have already been mentioned. It's estimated that 60% of all emergency ambulance transports in the U.S. have to do with deregulated breathing. So bad breathing habits have exacerbated and shut down our physical systems over years of chronic holding and tension. Proper breathing can keep the systems of the body functioning in harmony, signal us about imbalances in our energy, and help us correct them, and thereby be a perfect companion on route to health and happiness. Now the second exercise that we're going to do is called connected breathing, and it's to help deal with high arousal situations, more emergency situations, it will help us safely into an altered, mild state of consciousness controlled by you, empowering you to more breath awareness and mastery. So this exercise number three takes us into the fight-flight sympathetic nervous system reactions and helps us stay centered even in the state of high arousal. This exercise should ordinarily be practiced with a trained breath worker in the beginning until enough comfort has been achieved to do on one's own. It's not dangerous to do on one's own, but will be much more effective with coaching. We're going to take a little sample of that today. Now, if your body were a garden hose with water representing the air, we're going to turn up the faucet to let a little more water flow through. In other words, we're going to breathe just a little bit faster. 
This will flush out any blocks to the free flow of energy essential to the joy of life. Like a Walt Disney cartoon, the hose will bulge until the blocks, the tar and rocks in the hose, release and whoosh! The flow is full and free and there's a great sense of release and freedom. So this is not just an aerobics exercise. This blockage or tar and rocks in the hose represent limited thinking, stuck feelings, which stand out in the breathing process. Here's where we learn to breathe through stuck feelings, release limiting thoughts, and restore a sense of free-flowing vitality. As we free our thoughts and feelings, our breath reflects it. We literally breathe easy. Most importantly is the empowerment coming from the experience that we choose our thoughts, direct our feelings, and change our experience of life from the inside out. I direct myself as if I were going downstream in a boat, steering with each breath as to what allows me to breathe fully and freely and have it be easy and pleasurable. You monitor and discover the right pace for your release. You'll get a taste of a larger skill set called therapeutic breath work. And if you choose, you can go on and learn this. So, to begin the 100 breath exercise, connected breathing, first of all, have a positive intention for yourself in doing this breathing exercise. Your positive intention is primary to this exercise, and it is just as important as the breathing. The exercise itself is a combination of a conscious, loving intention and a heightened sense of breath awareness. So for a moment, close your eyes and focus on your heart area. You may put your hand on your heart at the beginning if you choose. Uh, draw in an inhale through your mouth into your heart area, moving your chest but not lifting the shoulders. Immediately release at the top of the inhale and let the exhale come through your mouth without efforting. Continue to take the next inhale into your heart area. This is breathing through your mouth, connecting each inhale and exhale in a continuous rhythm. And it's going to be a bit faster than your normal resting rate, almost like you are jogging. You are going to adjust the amplitude and pace to keep a full free breathing without hyperventilating. You're going to learn how to release negative or limiting thoughts that come up as you're breathing, allowing your feeling to flow free and let your body and voice move to accommodate this. All right, now we're going to do this together, so just breathe easy for a moment. We're going to take 100 complete inhales and exhales in this manner, watching the inner energy movement with compassion. Now, you can play with this energy movement by, oh, say you, you're feeling a little stuck in a certain area of your body. Just focusing on that area and breathing into it. Or you may have some feelings, uh, uh, mad, sad, glad, scared. Any feeling can come up. Rather than stifling or holding your feelings, breathe with it. Thoughts can come while you're doing this little mini exercise here. Oh, this isn't working for me. Oh, it's, they're going too fast. Oh, I have to use a lavatory. <laughs> Any thought, as we well know, our mind is very busy 24-7. You choose the thought that keeps you doing the breathing and having it be easy and pleasurable. And finally, just trusting the spirit of the breathing process itself. No one I know of has been ultimately harmed by breathing, whereas very many people I know have become ill by not breathing, stopping their breath. Now, at the end of our 100 connected breaths, you're going to breathe normally, just grounding yourself and just integrating your feelings and your awareness. The shortened form of these exercises is just two things. Keep breathing and adjust for ease and fullness. All right, 
Uh, now, a mini therapeutic breathwork cycle may occur as you do this. In just a brief space of taking 100 connected breaths, it starts out with an initial period of adjustment to your breathing, then a buildup of energy via the continuous rhythm to a point of release in the breathing mechanism and the mental-emotional holding patterns, and then a returning of the breath to and the mind to e equilibrium. If you begin to get dizzy or tingle or show signs of hyperventilation, slow down your pace and relax on your exhale. Stop the rapid breathing if these symptoms do not abate. So it's important that you go at your own pace here. Now I'm going to do this exercise right here with you. So you will have the opportunity, just as you're watching this video, to do the exercise. Now, you may go faster or slower than I'm breathing, or the same as me. It's important that you choose your own rate. At the end of your 100 breaths, take a deep sigh and just feel the state of your body. Okay? Let's close your eyes then, focus on your breath, and let's begin together. You can just relax, focus on your breath and the energy in your body for a moment. You might indeed feel a bit more energized. You have increased the energy in your body. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is something that you should do continuously. The skill involved in this exercise is to energize and acclimate your body to higher energy levels through releasing any mental or emotional or physical holding patterns. Anything that you have holding going on, physically, mentally, or emotionally, is going to stand out like a sore thumb when you try to breathe that way. You can practice and learn to let go through a cycle on your own. And if you discover a major holding pattern, negative self-image, emotional blockage, or physical frozenness or pain, you may want to consult a professional breath worker to coach you through the process of release and retraining your breathing, thinking, and feeling patterns. So what did you experience with these two breathing exercises? They're, they're very different. As I said, the first is the maintenance exercise through the nose and very calming. The second, very energizing. But both bring us to a similar place, which is 
a sense of feeling at home and having a mastery over our own energy being. How do you sense breath awareness and training might be useful in your life? Use these two breathing techniques and get the support you need in perfecting them such that you can do the belly or diaphragmatic breathing more and more every day and employ the connected breathing as needed. Now this may seem daunting to you at first, but the seeds of success in mastering them have already been planted just in what you did here. You have the mental and emotional foundation for having your breath and your intention support you past the roadblocks to maintaining the life you choose. These are tools in your toolbox that are free and portable and with you every day.